job, you know? Is that what it is? Or is it not security or anything? Oh, well, no. Nah. Just to make sure I do a good job. Yeah. I have to also send pictures at the end of the service to make sure the TV's put up properly and all that good stuff. Which I hope you don't mind. No. All right. I just want my TV up. I got you. <laughs> How long have you guys been living over here? That's literally since uh, last Thursday. Okay. And you came all the way from what part of Tennessee? Uh, Nashville. Nashville, okay. okay. I just left Nashville not too long ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was in Nashville looking at the uh, Tennessee Titans Stadium. Oh, yeah. Just browsing around, saw the country music festival that they had going on and all that. Oh, music. yeah. And yeah. if you like country uh, music, that's the place to be. Yeah, I think it definitely should have. They have a lot going on in the crowd. Didn't know that, so it's something new to me. And do you go by Kenneth or do you go by Ken? Do you shorten it up to Ken or not? Well, Kenneth um, is the normal man. Most people say Kenneth out of pure recognition. Yeah, I just out of normal. Yeah, yeah out of normal. See, they'll, they'll say Kenneth. Which I mean, I don't have a problem with that. But. Hey, listen, I listen. I, I answer to almost anything. Hey, you do whatever. <laughs> He's from up north. He likes to shorten people's names. <laughs> Down south, people are named what they name for a reason. Yeah, that's typically how it goes, but let me <laughs> ask this question. Do you drink unsweetened tea, or you have gotten accustomed to the sweet tea of the south? Well, my, my wife, tea, well, like this, she's a southern girl to start with. <laughs> I, I was the Yankee that came down and stole her away. Oh, yeah. I was born and brought up in New Jersey. What part of New Jersey? Uh, Princeton. Okay, I'm familiar with that. I, I, I haven't gone there, there, but I'm familiar with it. I lived there, how long was it, 25 years? 25 years ago. Yeah, 20, and then we moved to Nashville. Yeah, I used to go up there and I'd ask for tea when I first moved out there, and they'd bring me hot, unsweet tea. I mean, they're like, what's this? Yeah, hot, unsweet tea. Yeah. I know it's a sense of, uh, of normalcy down here if you want to have sweet tea, so. Yeah. If you ask for anything that's iced tea or cold tea or tea related, yeah. it's going to come sweet. So just yeah. <laughs> formality purposes for me. Now, now, with that being said, I am probably one of the rare people that live in the South and do not drink sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I get looked at all the time. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. What's wrong with you guys? No. Like, <laughs> we have to move them out of here. Like, <laughs> I always get hit with it, but yeah, it's, it's just something I never really liked. I wasn't a sugar fan growing up, and I don't think my mother and father allowed me to eat a lot of sugar. Yeah, so. my sons aren't. Yeah, they, so. they don't drink sweet tea either. So, I mean, it doesn't bother me if I don't have a glass, but I, I can see where people yeah. lose their minds. Oh, nothing. yeah, I do. I, I just sit in this store because I can't find my tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> you better go out there to rush and get me some tea. Now, it's not as bad as those who are coffee drinkers. I will no, say well, that. No, I'm not eating that. I don't like the coffee. I'll drink it if I'm cold. But the coffee one is the one that people have to have. Oh, that's yeah. That's the most. She drank it in the Once again, it's a whole lot harder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see
Now, I need to take this. Close this. I was looking for you. Can't find you. Get the little magnetic. Close it. Close it. The channel speakers will be lab labeled Denon. That's if you want to get a higher one. Um, Denon, Sony. I can tell you right now, I'll probably go buy one and I'm going to probably call you guys back up to come out and install this for me. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I used to be stupid now. Well, I used to also work at Best Buy, so I would have. I remember when this TV was sold because it was the last of its generation before Sharp stopped doing TV. Right. So I remember a lot of things just off of being a seller. So <laughs> Um, it's going to be a receiver. You want to make sure it's just 5.1, whatever the channels are. Okay. But they're going to have a multitude of channels that go up and down. Um, if and when you do get it, you put it right here. These will be able to power all your air home speakers and the HDMI cables. This hole right here is for that, right? So if you have or want to get an HDMI cable for this TV, you run the HDMI cable through the back, which is what I do. I have to take it back down, run it through this hole. Good catch. And place it down here. But they already have it set up for you to do that. Not too weird. Does that have to be glued up or something? I'm thinking. It was just thumb tacked up too. But I see where everything is placed. Let me do. You don't have the screws for this TV, do you? Uh, no. You're fine. Before, before I make a fire, I'm like, oh. Screw rack just in case. TV's not fracking. Screws. I don't know what the hell he was trying to find it out, but. Okay. I think this is the one I did. That you need.
Possibly do just two things for me. Mayor okay? Thank you. Yep. I get to talk here too. They did pretty good with the outlet. Um, the outlets behind the bookcase over here. That's wow. Yeah. My goodness. I've never seen that many outlets over here. I, I mean, have. They got Christmas <laughs> out there. Yeah. yeah, this house has outlets coming out and on, but oh my god. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna ask you why did I have that? Because <laughs> that was behind that. This whole TV was sitting in my home at, on top of my fireplace, um, not you know mounted to the wall like it is now. Mm -hmm. But when they were taken down, that was back there, and I have no idea. I mean, we didn't have other things hooked up to it. it was I wouldn't just, recommend putting it back because I mean you you have a six prong outlet and that would be an additional surge protector that requires a direct outlet. Um, you don't need if anything it sees these six and I don't know what could. PlayStation, DVD player, um, I mean Blu-ray player, TV. Now, see what I what I did have I had a 75 inch TV mm -hmm. that was up in the bonus room and that had the Blu-ray, the DVD, what have you. But this TV was literally just the TV. You don't, yeah, you don't need to do that again. So it just needs to be the power cable goes into that outlet. And going forward, all of your channels need to come out of that box. Out of that box. Yeah, so when Good. we get the receiver, it'll just go in there. And that's where your power needs to be converted huh. As to. I said, I'm going to call your ass and you guys are going to come. <laughs> right here, man. Let me know. <laughs> All right, we're on to the last part now. This is where I need your guidance. All right. Are you gonna need me up on the stool too? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. I don't know why I didn't just put it. It looks like they had little nails in here. Yeah, they got the nails behind it. Oh, okay. It's nails so behind it. So it's Those go there, that goes there. I guess because you do it all the time, I don't know how the hell you can put you up that TV. Hmm? I said, I guess it's because you do it all the time, but I said, I don't know how you can buggy load that TV. I mean, sometimes I require additional assistance. I don't usually try to do it single handedly. That's not my first <laughs> one. Not by choice. No, absolutely not. I would prefer to have two people, but. It's not as if I can't do it, I just don't like to. <laughs> so you see where the power cord is on this side? Yes. Because you take it and run it through the back. Just in this opening in the front there, right? In that hole up there. Oh, in that hole? Yeah. Okay.
You grab the food that's not? PKG the loves back with another vid on how I did you already know what it is and today I'm here to talk about the opportunities that present itself in front of you and what you could do with them today all right so there was about a period when uh, COVID kicked off everybody remembers that everyone lost their jobs everyone got sick they didn't know what to do some people passed away sorry about all that but in that that ideal moment of a pandemic there was also a moment of opportunity and that opportunity that presented itself left people without a job and left people with thinking about different ways to make more money. Here was one of those ways that I found out immediately after losing my retail job that I had for about three years. So each and every one of these skills right here was something that I learned out of a retail network that working there would have probably made me about $100,000 if I was doing it independently. Wait, $100,000? Yes, because it's a slew of information that you have to know. And being in that retail, you're trapped into that hourly circle rage on where you're only getting paid $13 or $15 an hour, whatever it may be. But learning these skills and having these tools to your assessment may just give you the extra bag that you was looking for. So, let's get into it for a minute. Let's talk about it for a moment. Each and every one of these skills that I have up has always been something that I've used and had to learn along the way. Starting with the smart home, any and everything that you get out of a store now, most, li most likely will be a technology advanced device that you'll be using and most people have to figure out how to use that device. It's either you figure it out or you pay somebody to come out there and do it. One of those two options. And when you're losing one of those two, it's also going into your time. Do you really want to take the time to figure out how to do something? Are you really going to be that patient on figuring out something if it were to go wrong? So with these tools that we have here, these are also the opportunities that we use just to make some extra income. So because I know a lot about smart home, because I've seen and touched a lot of things that dealt with the smart locks, I'm able to do smart security systems, smart lock systems, smart hub and speaker setups. Um, I'm able to do the smart device setups. What are all those? So if I go into your house and you have an Amazon Alexa or you have a Google Home just sitting on your stand and you're asking me to make that your alarm clock, and also configure it into your doorbell so when your doorbell rings, that gets a ring too. All of those things incorporate with each other but require Wi-Fi and a little bit of additional skill that someone has to have if it isn't you. So because of knowing this information piece on how to install and how to set up this stuff, you can make up an extra bag on just doing it. So I've had to learn all these things. Just started with the smart home, one element in itself. But there were more that I went down to because I was one of those people that was considered a jack of all trades. I don't want to say I wasn't a master of none because I mastered them all. So I moved on to doing home theater. Everyone has a TV. If you don't have a TV, 
that isn't a flat back TV. I don't know what type of TV you're using anymore and you probably should throw it away. So with that being said, TVs that you have are going to be bigger and they're also going to be wider, but they aren't going to have great sound. So then when we start talking about the hookups, the things that go to it, you have your surround sound, you have your sound bar, you have your optical cords. What are these devices? Things that have to go to the TV so that you hear everything from the TV and you get that Dolby Atmos feel when you're in that movie theater or you're trying to get that surround sound feel where the vibrations from the floor make you feel as though, hey, this is an epic movie. This is about to be a great scene. You get those explicits that you don't want to use during the movie, but you're loving because you're engaged with it differently. So learning these skills on how to set up a sound system and give you that full amount of feel it's something that pays you out in the long run. So we started talking about how to make 100K. Just doing these two alone, these two is 100K. No more. You don't have to learn anything else, but just learning those two. Because people will always need help with these two things. How to set up smart devices. What do I need to do? I forgot my Wi-Fi password. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with this. It said it was a simple, easy, one, two, three step process, and it's not. Hey, that's why you get a technician out here to do it. So, learning these skills will get you some bread in your pocket. Moving on to the next one. So, let's check this out for a moment. You got computer repair and you got home office setup. What are those? Computer repair. So, computer tune-up, data backup, new computer setup, virus removal. We all know about those things and what they may entitle, right? So, if you don't have an antivirus software system or you didn't have a firewall before you got onto a computer, you caught a hold towards the Trojan horses on it, hey, someone's going to have to wipe, restart, refresh your computer. That person would be me. That person is the guy, the guy that's going to get it clean, the powder is going to restart it, reinstall all your software, make sure you don't have all that good stuff anymore, and be able to use your function as if you purchased it for the first time again. So learning these skills aren't hard. promise you, you probably will see a couple of YouTube videos from me or someone else. I'll preferably say myself because I've done videos on these to show you how to set these things up. Because virus removal and cleanup, uninstalling pro uh, softwares like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, 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 access and Outlook, all of those uh, applications that you get from Word also go into your software install and software uninstall process that you're going to do. Most people don't know how to do this, don't know where to look for, don't know where to go to, and this is all the money that they have to spend to get this thing figured out. It gets worse. It gets a whole lot worse because now we go into, hey, um, because I'm on this computer and this is a new computer for me, uh, how do I set up my email? How do I get to my account information? What do I do to look up this? So now you're having to explain and go down the secret steps on what it takes to set up all this stuff because it's going to be complicated for somebody. Just make sure that somebody isn't you. And in the process of doing that, you have a lot of things that you're going to have to put together. So say, for instance, I have a computer over here. I have a printer over here. That person wants me to have this computer talk to this printer so that it prints wirelessly. I have to do that job separately but it also comes with its own service charge. I know that it's going to require the Wi-Fi to set that up. I know it's going to also require the password. It's going to also require the connection distance that I have or bandwidth that I'll be able to do with it. So all of these parameters and things I'm thinking of before I even go to the printer to set it up. But all of this is under computer repair. So anything I touch with a computer at any given point in time, I'm lethal on. And I'm going to tear up and destroy because I'm built that way. So any of these lessons that I'm going to teach, any of these problems I'm going to fix, any of these things I'm going to do, just understand it pays you to do it. So, yeah, this is a good bit of knowledge to learn. Now we go right into home office and school. Now we know why this is brought into here, right? But I'm going to go ahead and explain it anyway because I, I feel like we need to talk about it. All right, home office and school. Most kids since the pandemic have had to go home and learn school from home. So who else would be better to come out there and set them up for success other than yourself? The person that's going to come out there and make sure the internet works, the person that's going to come out there and make sure all the programs work, the person that's going to come out there and ensure that they're able to log into all their applications and get right into what they need to get into to learn. You could be that person because it's easy. It's an easy but because you know all of this and you know the simplest part is you having to set this up for somebody else that needs it. So just understand that 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 I'm thinking for a moment and see the value in just these two steps alone. So now that we've gone over smart home home theater setup and hookup, computer setup or computer repair and help, and home office. We got two more things left. One is going to be easier than the other, but I want to make sure I talk about the first one, uh, the harder one first. TV mounting. I don't personally think that TV mounting is hard. I don't think it's difficult. I don't think it's a 
It's during this process. I think personally most people are afraid. If I see a TV on a wall, I think I can take it down and I think I can put it up. That's just to be honest with you. Most people don't feel that same way. And because most people don't feel that way, that means there's an avenue for revenue right there. Right at that spot, right at that moment. And you have to understand what you're approaching and how you're going to attack that. So any person that does not want to mount a TV or has a fear, you tell them that you can do it and there's going to be a service that comes with it. So any person that has that dilemma that's trying to mount a TV, depending on if it's one, two, three, uh, if it's a 55 or 65 or a multitude of 65, the price value of those TVs go up because someone wants that service done. You go out there being the specialist that you are, knowing the skills that you know, having the tools that you have and the resources that you gain from this experience of talking with me today, you'll definitely be out there able to mount a TV, put it on the wall and ensure that it's not going to fall at any given point in time because you're built that way. And by the end of this conversation today, we want to ensure that you're built that way. So as we look into these TVs, I just wanted to talk about it because there's a lot of money to be made in that avenue as well. Out of all four of these, you could probably make $100,000 just from this alone. So, out of combination of all these jobs, I'm listing all the opportunities that present itself. What you can, what you're able, how far you're able, your capabilities, and I don't want to limit you with anything that you're doing. But I do want to let you know all of the steps is possible and profitable as you're learning. The last one is going to be mobile tablets and setups. There are few and small occasions where you're running to teach someone how to set up a phone, but in those moments that you do, that is also profit as well. So someone that does not know how to get into their uh, Gmail address or don't know how to use these applications, whatever the sort may be, you go in there, you give them that advice, you give them that support, you're able to make a payout because you know the knowledge. All of this stuff that I'm talking about today does not require a lot of hands-on. But as you're knowing the knowledge, you'll realize that each and everything requires you to think about it more than it requires you to do more pushing, do more turning. You have to really apply yourself in thought and how I'm going to do this. So once you understand this, the money will start flowing for you a whole lot faster and a whole lot quicker. So I gave you all this today to let you know the opportunities that are out there that presents itself. You guys can do it because I've seen someone out here that is doing it. I'm on track to possibly do it at this moment. And I want to make sure that everybody around me is on that same playing field, that same stage, because we can all stand up there together. This is 100000 in action. I'm showing you. You can do this. All of this stuff is, is not even Googleable, but you can look at it and see what can I figure out? How can I do it? There are tutorial videos on what you can do to learn more. I just don't want to limit you to say, hey, I worked at a retail store. I worked at a retail store for forever. What other opportunities can I do other than work at this retail store? I was in that same boat. I was in that same boat for about three years and I had to figure something out. This is what I figured out. Where to take my skills and my skills took me to the next level. You got to go to the next level. You can't stay stagnant. You can't stay there. You have to go to the next level. All right. So today, this is just to give you a presentation of everything that you could do to make a hundred thousand dollars if you learn these skills. Each and every one of them have their own payout, but I promise you, they're gonna be great when you start. All right. PKG Deluxe is in. PKG Deluxe is out, baby. Oh no. <laughs>